Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Now we learn rules of rounding off. Right? Most of it we'll be doing, but be, it'll become tricky when the digit you're dropping is 5. So let's try to understand the rules of rounding off. First rule, if the digit to be dropped is less than 5, then the preceding digit is left unchanged. Suppose you have to round off 7.23 to one decimal place. What will you get? 7.2. That everyone knows, right? Next rule, if the digit to be dropped is more than 5, the preceding digit is increased by 1. So 7.27 up to 1 decimal point will become 7.3. Right? Third rule. If the digit to be dropped is 5, followed by digits other than zeros. Okay, 5 is there, then there are some things which are other than zeros like 1, 2, 3. Then the preceding digit is increased by 1. So this is more than 5, right, effectively. So if the digit to be dropped is 5, followed by digits other than zeros, then the preceding digit is increased by 1, always, right? Now, if the digit to be dropped is 5, or 5 followed by zeros, then the preceding digit is left unchanged if it is even. This is even number, leave it unchanged. This is again even number, you are dropping this 5. So this will become 7.2 up to one decimal place. This is 5, this is 5 followed by zeros. 7.35, when you round off, this becomes 7.4. If this is odd, you increase by 1. If it is even, you leave it unchanged. Right? So 3 became 4 or 7.350 also will become 7.4. So this can be a little bit tricky. If the digit to be dropped is 5, followed by zeros or just 5, then the preceding digit is left unchanged if it is even. The preceding digit is increased by 1 if it is odd. Try to understand this. Suppose we have got 6.65. Okay. And you want to round off to one decimal place. Then this will be 6.6. .6. Don't change it because it is even. 6.45 if you have to round off. Then again the digit of dropping is 5. This is even. This will give you 6.4. After these zeros can be there, same rule is applicable. If it is 6.55, then you are dropping 5. This is odd number. Increase it by 1. Right? 6.35. So it's odd number. Increase it by 1. 6.4. But if something is there after that 5, not zeros, something other than zeros, so 6.651. Then always increase this. This will become 6.7 up to one decimal place. 6.451 will become 6.5 because it's more than 5. 6.351, again it becomes 6.4. This is more than 5. Anyway, it will become 4, right? Like this. 6.5. 551 will become 6.6. .6. So more than 5 means 5 is not followed by zeros, always increased by 1. With just 5, increase by 1 if it is odd number, leave it unchanged if it is even number. This rule is there because we like even numbers more than odd numbers. Right? Now we learn algebraic operations with significant digits. First is addition or subtraction. What is the rule for addition or subtraction using significant digits? 
Suppose we have to add up 1.2 plus 3.45 plus 6.789. What do you get? 9, 13, 8, 4, 12 to 14, 2, 5, 6, 11. 11.439. Now this is not the answer. Because this number, this reading has got only one significant digit after decimal. This has got two significant digits after decimal. This has three. So we look at the number with the least number of significant digits after the decimal point. So which one is having least number of significant is after decimal point? This one. How many? One. So final answer should also have the same number of significant digits after the decimal point. That is one. So the final answer is 11.4. So rule is look at the number with the least number of significant digits after decimal point. The final answer should also have the same number of significant digits after decimal point. This is having one after decimal point. That is the least of all this. So final answer we should have only one significant digit after decimal point. Now people handle this differently. This is what you will find in the book Resni Halliday. Right? You see the book S.C. Verma. Concept of Physics by Brother S.C. Verma. He does the rounding of first. So he'll round off this to one decimal place and give 1.2, get 1.2. This will round off to one decimal place, obeying the laws. You are dropping 5. So this will remain unchanged if it's even. So he'll get 3.4. This again, you obey the laws of rounding off. So this is more than 5. Up to one decimal place, this is 6.8. You add up 8 for 12, right? 8 for 12 to 14. So we get here 4. We get 7, 3, 10, 1, 11, 11.4. 11 so here we get the same answer. But in some situations there may be some difference because of this different techniques followed. Even if you search on the internet, both techniques are there at different places. So your choice, let us follow this. Okay, first we'll do the calculation and then do the rounding off. This is the rule for addition or subtraction. What is the rule for multiplication or division? Suppose we have to multiply 1.2 with 21.67. Right. Now this multiplication you can do by any technique you want. Okay, I can do it using my calculator. So what do I get? 1.2 multiplied by 21.67. So I get 26.004, right, 0. Now, this I am getting using multiplication. So what answer should I write? Should I write this as the answer? No. Now you look at the number of significant digits without bothering about decimal point. Don't worry about decimal point now. This decimal point is here, here, don't look at them. Okay, this is here, that you look. This has got two significant digits overall. This has got four significant digits. Which is the lesser of the two? This one, two. Final answer should also have the same number of significant digits. So answer to this is 26. Right, so please understand that. Suppose we have to divide one number is 1101. You divide by say 12. Right, so what did you get? So let me do this division using my calculator 1101 divided by 12, we get it as 91.75. Right. But is this the answer? No. We will take care of significant digits. This has got how many significant digits? Two. This has got four. Which is the lesser one? Two. 
Final answer should also have the same number of significant digits. You round off as per the rules that you have learned, right? This is more than 5, so increase this by 1. So this is the answer, right? So in multiplication and division, we don't worry about the decimal point. We look at the number of least, least, having the least number of significant digits, right? Without bothering about decimal points. The final answer should also have the same number of significant digits. In addition and subtraction, you look at the number of significant digits after the decimal point and whichever is least, the final answer should have that same number of significant digits. But there is one exception for exact numbers. Exact numbers are precisely known and can have as many significant digits as the calculation requires. For example, one feet is 12 inches exactly. So when you have to convert feet to inches, suppose you have to convert inches to feet, 26.98 inches say, to feet, you divide by 12. This 12 is an exact number. So assume this has got infinite number of significant digits because it's exactly 12.0000 exactly, right? It has not come from any measurement. This has got four significant digits. Don't worry about the significant digits in the exact number. You can think of this as infinite significant digits. So what do you get? 26.98 by 12. What do we get? 22.48. Now this is not the answer, right? Is this the answer or not the answer? 22.48, after that I've got 3, 3, 3, 3. Now, we look at the significant digits only in this measurement. This is not a measurement, this is a conversion factor and this is an exact number. So, they've got 4 significant digits, these have got infinite significant digits. Final answer should have 4 significant digits. So, look at 4 significant digits, round it off here. So, the answer is 22.48. It will be actually 2.248, right? Yes. This is 2.248 feet. Right. So, exact numbers are precisely known and they can have as many significant digits as the calculation requires. Here, this has got four significant digits. This is an exact number. So, don't worry about the significant digits here. This is four. Final answer should have only four significant digits, that is 2.248, right? As simple as that. So, different rules for different places, in addition or subtraction, look at the number having the least number of significant digits after decimal point, the final answer should also have the same number of significant digits after the decimal point. Rule for multiplication or division, look at the number with the least number of significant digits without bothering about decimal point. The final answer should also have the same number of significant digits. Exceptions for exact numbers, exact numbers are precisely known and can have as many significant digits as the calculation requires. Therefore, don't worry about the number of significant digits in exact numbers. Look at the other numbers in the calculation and see which one is having least number of significant digits and based on that, you give the answer. Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning.